um, I did buy a um, brass nut for this uh, as part of the planning going forward. It looks like it's uh, the right width of the nut to fit in that slot. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, and this is a 43 because of the spec on this was 43, but when I measured it, it's actually 41.6 millimeters. This is supposed to be 43. I'll check that one too. The blackness, the darkness of this uh, fretboard is, as I mentioned, is quite nice. I think they call it amaranth. I don't really know what that is, but it feels really hard. And the color is spectacular. I'm really pleased with that. I fixed the, the nut and got it to where I wanted it to be. Then I, I took it out and I tried the brass nut. The brass nut is uh, physically too low on the high E side. So I put a, and it is a bone nut. I tested it against a couple of bone nuts that I have. So that's okay. So I put it back in uh, a little bit of glue, put string pressures on it, and um, it's, um, you know, curing. And in the meantime, I'm just taking the opportunity to open up the back cover Take a look inside, see what we'll find in here. Yeah, there's a buffing compound around that. Yeah, the screws they put in there are uh, quite awful, actually. But they do the job. Soldering on the claw looks awful. They brought the they brought the uh, the wire to ground it up between the springs and over the top of this claw. It would have been nicer just to bring it out the side and around here to keep it away from the springs. But there is a lot of buffing compound in there, you can see. Around the edges. Not that that will affect the playability at all. There's some wood chips there from that where they drill that out. The claw seems to be unevenly Yes, the claw is unevenly screwed in. Level that off. Tomorrow I will uh, cut off these strings, unmount the neck, do the um, do the work that needs to be done along uh, the neck. Check out all the frets. I notice that the screws that hold the saddles down back here, there are three different size screws. There's really two long ones, and this one. Is a little bit longer than that one, and that one, and that one. So there's three different lengths of screws here. Um, enough adjustment to be able to pull back, but they're pretty much at the forward end of where the, their travel is. The other thing I noticed with the saddles that I bought, these are, I bought gold ones. I, I thought the whole guitar should have gold hardware because of how the Paisley looks. And, uh, these gold saddles were half the price of a set of uh, steel. And they've got little rollers on them and a guide to hold the string in place, unlike these flat ones. So if I look here and I place it exactly where the other saddle is, they're exactly the same length, so that's okay. I don't care about the mismatch of colors. I just wanted a better saddle than these flat ones where the string can move around and the rollers because I'm a big fan of rollers I have a brand new fender selector switch to replace this one which I'm sure is probably the flimsy PCB type got that for like a good price 11 bucks or something like that so we've got a few parts to change I've opened the pick guard. The 
So this is all all going to go, all has to go. The uh, wiring from the bridge pickup is uh, braided shielded. The wiring for the neck and middle are just regular plastic thin gauge wire. And uh, what I would typically do in this con uh, configuration is I would twist, you know, braid the wires, uh, seeing as how signal wires are uh, susceptible to inductance, capacitance, and transference and external noises uh, by braiding them. What happens is that you uh, end up causing um, a cancelling effect by twisting uh, a pair of shielded wires. You'll find that in many, many forms of uh, equipment that use communications. Uh, it's always twisted shielded pairs that um, is twisted at about a half inch distance that they, they twist in order to be able to do cancelling of noise that can be induced from other pairs of wires beside them or from external uh, surfaces. Uh, it's used in very sensitive equipment, aircraft, medical, um, older telephone systems before fiber. Underneath the, um, underneath here, um, you can see where uh, they buffed outside, but they didn't buff underneath the pick guard. And it looks like the pick guard was installed when they buffed. There's a chip in the neck pocket, if I can get that around like that. There's a chip out of the neck pocket which speaks to quality. The sides of the neck pocket were sanded after that was shot because uh, those are showing um, bare wood on both sides. And what they did was, is they opened it up in such a way that the neck pocket um, no longer, the neck doesn't sit um, snug. It, 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 it's, it's floppy. And that also speaks to the quality of the uh, Chinese source for Harley Benton. So for now, I've uh, taken a look and I'm going to be thinking about this while I'm working on the neck. And uh, I'll make a decision at some point um, what I'm going to do with uh, these, uh, these parts. I'm back for a quick snippet. I've got the frets leveled and polished. Came out pretty good. Beautiful. All right, we're moving on. So the next thing I'm going to do on the neck is uh, clean up all the, the poly, uh, buff it up, and uh, it'll be ready to mount back on the body once I decide what I'm going to do with that body. All of the uh, nuts here were snug, and um, doesn't seem to be any other issue than now that there's, there's no string tension, there's a little bit of that wiggle, which happened on the other uh, tuners as well that I have on my CST24. And uh, it's uh, doing a pretty good job. There was a lot of buffing crud up in the hole, right up in there. And it's hard to see. But I've uh, got most of it out. I cleaned out the uh, head of the Allen uh, nut. So, it's time for supper. Okay, we're finished the wiring where I am, and it looks like that. We've got a pretty neat area in the controls, wiring up to the, the pickups, nice and neat in, in place. Spin that around and take a look at the uh, pots. We've got the Double capacitor push-pull 
2247, uh, Volume 1 for the bridge, Volume 2 for the singles, and I've been able to confirm, I think I'll snug that up a bit, uh, with the tap test on all of the pickups and the switching combinations, that I am able to blend the two pots, depending on which pickup I have selected. Next step will be to mount it on the body. Uh, I've looked at this uh, uh, pot that came, jack that came with it, and um, it's a much more solid one than ones I've received in the past. So uh, instead of trying to enlarge the hole in there, which I would need to put a switchcraft in there and possibly damage that chrome area, I'm going to reuse this one for now because it seems uh, quite uh, solid. So next step will be uh, getting it on the body, passing the wires through so I can put the jack back on and uh, solder up the claw. So here we are at the body and pick guard is back together and uh, everything is good. I did the tap test again after the installation. It's uh, very quiet so far. So, uh, oops, there's the back. Got a new wire in here for the, for the claw. Better done than it was. And the next step is remounting the neck strings. And uh, we'll see where we go. What's going on with that? That screw is short. How can that screw be? Oh, don't tell me. Is this another disappointing aspect from Harley Benton? It is. Look at that. Two different length screws. Two are biting and two are barely going to get this much tread into the wood. And I don't think I have another screw. I might have on the Cozart guitar which I am not using. Stand by. Okay, so I was able to find a couple of longer ones out of that 12-string Cozart. Well, I guess this wasn't the guitar you were expecting, but when I finished reworking the Stratocaster and was playing through some different sounds with it. I didn't feel like my ears liked the humbucker and it's supposed to be the same humbucker as in the CST24 and my ears weren't weren't hearing it so I decided to get out this one do a comparison between this humbucker and that humbucker and see how close or how not close they are together. So I did Galveston with this guitar. So I got that up. I've gone through a few lines that I can, so I can remember how to play it. And I'm going to play a little bit of it on here. And then I'm just going to switch the guitar and I'm going to play it on that one and see how close it is together with just the humbucker and all the same settings exactly the same. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go.
I screwed that up, but it's enough to make a comparison. All right, let's put that onto tuner so it doesn't make a big clunk when I pull that out. I think they sound close. So, and again. Let's hope we screw it up less. just a little bit by not having it all the way up actually there's no knob on this thing it's gonna be some new knobs but for now so all the way up it really mutes it muffles it down a bit but in general I think the humbucker sounds just like the one in the CST originally I thought it was kind of brash you the push pull function which I left basically wired the way it came uh, I just moved this part from this position into the middle position and I moved the wire that comes from the humbucker that used to go to the switch first to go to this um, push pull switch first and then goes back to the selector switch and that allowed me to have the independent volumes. So, it diminishes. By about half. Changes the tone slightly softens it up a bit and makes it sound like a single coil in the bridge. If I go up to uh, the middle position I'll put that full on
pickups by themselves are not bad. I like them. I found out when I was stringing it up why there was so much play in the neck pocket. It's because um, it wasn't aligned properly with the bridge. Their CNC drilling seems to be off. And in order to be able to line up the two E strings properly down the neck, they had to sand out the pocket. They sanded out both sides so the whole neck could be pushed down this way to be able to line up the E strings and then tighten up the screws, which is what I ended up having to do when I reinstalled and put the two strings back on. Um, and that leaves a gap up here a little bit. I don't have one of the thinner picks out, but one of my thinner picks, like a 73, will probably fit right in that gap. So there's a gap open in here, but it's really tight down there. Not a big deal. Um, and it's quiet in all the positions, so that's pretty nice. There's no buzzing and stuff, so the rewire went uh, well. Yeah, well, let me let me show you the capacitors while I'm here. So, 22 microfarad capacitor in the pushed-in position. Pull it out. Zero. So it gives a little bit of flexibility. I usually don't use much tone at all. Every so often I have to turn one in just to roll off something on some guitar. But it's rare. I decided that since I was there, I had the push-pull pot to go in anyway and the capacitor to add the 22 to the 47 that came in the in the guitar to begin with so what the hell do it anyway that's the end of the story there's many things I found on this Chinese made Harley Benton which uh, the quality of the workmanship is not as good as the Vietnam made uh, CST 24 that's my personal impression based on the two guitars side by side. Thanks for watching.